Hello guys and girls and welcome back. It's Big John here, the at's at the bottom of the screen if you like to listen to my music. So is all the relevant information I'll be speaking about in this video. So let's start off with this first. If you are the winner of the Neo competition, I will put the winner's names here now. You should see them. Please make sure you hit me up within 48 hours on Discord or Telegram. Drop me a direct message and then I will be able to get you onto the Neo database so you can use your one month free trial. So what I've decided to do today, I've decided to make a simple scalping strategy. I like to call this one the super scalping strategy for people. And we'll be using an Ichimoku and some other indicators just to make sure everything's in line for you to be able to catch a trade. Hopefully so every other day or every day if it does appear. So on that note, guys and girls, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm on my chart. I only have three indicators on my chart at the moment, which is the Ichimoku, the Pivot Standard, and the TDI, Traders Dynamic Index. That's what I have on my chart at the moment. I will show you the settings for this, so we can go over this straight away. If we just go to inputs, you can see this is all standard. I haven't changed nothing here. You can go to style, I've just taken out these three lines here. I've left these here all on. And then if we go to visibility, I've not touched nothing here on the Ichimoku. If we go over to pivots, the only thing I have changed here is I've changed this to a one. You can, if you want to back test, you can turn this to 30. What will actually happen is you'll have so much more pivots going back in history and you will be able to back test this strategy as much as you want to do to see how far the win rate goes on a certain pair, certain commodities, whatever it might be, you can back test it if you need to do so. On that note, everything else here is still left as the basic standard settings. And if you'd like to use these two indicators here, you just have to type them in. So you type in Ichimoku when you go to look for your indicators or you type in pivots standard. That's pivots standard. Both of them are trading view basic indicators. So I cannot share the link in the description below, but I can share the link for this traders dynamic index. And I will put that in the link below. And the settings for my traders dynamic index are right here. This is all standard and you can see here everything here is pretty much left as it should be standard as well so we'll just move forward on that if not you can change it to this as well okay so what we're actually looking for here is three simple confluences first and foremost this strategy is based on the 15 minute time frame 15 minute that's the one five it is not based for any other time frame so please do not be asking is can you trade this on the one minute can you trade this on the five minute if you like to test it by all means you can do so i am showing you this strategy on the 15 minute time frame so our first confluence here is to make sure that price is either in a downtrend as you can see on the Ichimoku or as you can see here price is in an uptrend on the Ichimoku as you can see the cloud is green our next confluence is what is the TDI doing at this specific moment so let's go to our TDI and what we're looking for on our TDI is a nice shark fin as you can see here this is a beautiful looking shark fin. Sometimes they won't be as good. They might be like this or they could be very small, but this is a very good shark fin. And so our third confluence is to make sure price is being supported by the pivot line, as you can see here. Now this resistance one is still classified as a pivot, but it's just a resistance. And this S one is also classified as a support, but it's still a pivot as you can see right here. So we are just expecting price to have a nice trend and to be supported or to have a resistance, as you can see here, covered by the pivot. And what we're going to be doing is looking for, again, our shark fin entry and then entering a trade. So we just had three simple confluences there. Now our risk management is as simple as this. We want to make sure we're taking a two, risk to reward ratio trade now your stop loss wants to be just above the pivot line or just above the ichimoku line or it can be just below the pivot line or just below the ichimoku line as you can see here now what i'm going to do next is show you a bunch of trades where this actually did occur so i'm going to go over currency pairs indices and metals 
So when we're looking at the trades here, we can see that there was an entry right here with the TDI crossing for this pair. You would have got in around about here. Your stop loss would have been about 16 pips and your take profit would have been about 38 pips. So we can see right now price hasn't hit our take profit. But at this point, you can see price is rejecting off a support level here. This is why we had a buy candle here. So unless price breaks the support, it might not hit our take profit level. So in that case, you might be in a situation where you said, okay, I have made profit because this is still, it was still 32 pips, it pretty much went into profit. It's not too bad. It's a 1.9 risk to reward ratio trade. You could have closed this trade here for the scalp, or you could leave it to run to obviously go to your 2.0 risk to reward ratio. But there you go. This was technically a winning trade. Now we do want to make sure that price finds itself, just like I said, as a resistance or a support around these pivot levels. So you can see nicely here, price did not break here. So it could possibly continue to sell for your scalp, which it did. AUDJPY, and you can see the same thing occurred here. We are in a downtrend. Price has come up to this level here. We did have a shark fin right about here. You would have got in this trade here. Your stop loss would have been just above the Ichimoku cloud. And you can see price almost hit your take profit level right here. Euro New Zealand, you can see straight away, you would have got in here. And you can see right now that price has found a perfect support right on the pivot level. And this pair did hit your take profit level right here. So you would have made your 50 pips profit. GBP New Zealand, exactly the same thing as Euro New Zealand. You see there was a shark fin here. There was a support with the trend of the Ichimoku and there was also a support with the pivot level. You can see price was failing to break here and there was a continuation of a possible scalp trade right here. NZDUSD, you can see you had your shark fin right here. You can see price was respecting this level. You can see it's a downtrend. Your stop loss would have been above here for 12 pips, 12.8 pips. And you can see straight away, 25 pips would have been about your two risk to reward. Price has not touched your TP yet, but you can see price has been respecting this downtrend. So you're almost there at the moment. And even if you was to close out now, you could close out at 1.74, which is still profitable for the day. Okay, so this is the point I know everybody loves. Everybody wants to be involved in and everybody wants something from which is gold silver or indices which are going to indices after so you can see here on gold today wasn't really the day where it gave you the type of trade we could technically say there was something here but price is not near the pivot level so it could still spike up to this level right now before the possible sell so let's say this isn't a trade now if we go back over to a previous day you can see that when gold consolidates, it's not good because price is in between so many different levels. So it could be a resistance to support, a resistance to support. But when it does find a nice trend, which it did find a nice trend going down here, you can see that if you did want to take a trade around this level here, we can see price started to break out a little bit of here. But we can see now that this was a sell trade. Why? Because price was hanging around this resistance level. So it was going through, coming back through, going through. And if anything, you probably would have entered your trade like here. And then you would have held, your stop loss would have been just above this Ichimoku here. Don't put it directly on the Ichimoku because that is the resistance level. You want to put it just above or just below. So just a little bit higher up. So it would have been something like this. And then straight away, you would have been able to make this sell trade. So it's not going to happen all the time. You have to test this yourself. Don't use the Ichimoku as a gospel of a sell. Wait for it to be with the Ichimoku and the pivot or resistance line. That's something I would state. But for gold um, and silver, you're going to have to back test even more thoroughly because it spikes a lot. So do not be shocked if gold spikes and hits your stop loss. Again, you have to back test your own win rate with this. And moving forward into the future, you would want to be testing your win rate as well with these trades. Don't take everything somebody says as gospel. You have to test your own strategy and you have to test how it works for you in the market as well. I'm just giving you some of the tools to help you find entries into the market. That's what I'm doing here. You can see, so there was this day here, but again, just like what I told you, spiked above the market. So you might see a common occurrence with something like this with metals where you're going to see a spike above a resistance level because they want to stop traders out. They don't want to give away gold and silver trades so easily. So it might be the thing that, yes, maybe you do take the trade, but make your stop loss just a little bit bigger when it comes to these types of trades. So if they do hit it, then it wasn't the right trade. But if they don't and they fake out, then you catch the 
continuation of the trade and that's what you would have caught here you had a shark fin entry here and you would have caught the continuation of the trade so already you can see it seems to be a lot easier trading currencies with this but this is what happens you can't use just one strategy to trade everything the same way you either have to adapt that strategy slightly or you just don't trade that strategy at all with other things and that's kind of what i do i use set strategies for set things personally myself when it comes to metals i explain all the time i do not scalp i do not scalp i swing trade metals so i will find an extreme high an extreme low and i'll look for entries there and hold it for a week or two if i have to now when we come over to indices indices is a better trading instrument for you to swing trade and for you to buy i always tell people it's better to buy it than to sell it of course if you're scalping you can try and sell as well with any types of pullbacks that happen but realistically on the monthly time frame this pair is buying all the time so if you look for buy re-entries in terms of scalping then you've got a better chance of winning the trade the majority of the time and you can see here there was a nice trend continuation price found a support on the pivot level there was also a shark fin tdi right here and you would have got in and you would have been able to catch this trade right here for your this was even a four but you could have caught it all you needed was this from this trade and you would have made your one to two straight away there and you would have caught your win for the day if you was taking the indice trade right there and it's the same for all the indices you don't have to worry it would be the same for spx the same for us 30 follow the trend which i tell people most of the time it's a bullish trend on the monthly time frame so if you're finding buy re-entries on a lower time frame you're doing yourself a better service basically so and yeah that's about it guys and girls so i've pretty much wrapped up how you can use the super scalping strategy i've gone over the video the best way i possibly could and i hope that this can help people find scalping opportunities again personally myself i just trade what neo uses which is my indicator if you are interested in purchasing that please just hit me up in telegram or discord also if you like to learn more on how i trade then you can get into the mentorship as well and that will help you i do go over daily zooms where i'll go through all of these pairs and what they could possibly be doing in the long term again i do not scalp i don't need to scalp at the moment because i've set myself up in a way with how things go on in my life where i look for longer term trades but of course everybody is not the same as me and people will like different things and that's why i've made this video for anybody out there back test it yourself get some results i hope it helps you and it's your boy big john and i'm out peace you did crazy, oh, you ain't on a payroll. Can't be hanging with the same bros. We don't even go to the same show. So please be quiet. I'm being polite. You did crazy, oh, you ain't on a payroll. Can't be hanging with the same bros. We don't even go to the same show. So please be quiet. I'm being polite. Hey, yo, TV, you killed this one. Ice cubes up in my cup. If it's spice, one pour it up. She's a bad influence and looking like one of us.